Hello everyone, welcome to Soto Coder. My name is Ravina, and today we are going to solve problem number 48, which is rotate image. Let's start by reading the problem statement. It says that you are given an n by n 2D matrix representing an image. Rotate the image by 90 degrees clockwise. You have to rotate the image in place, which means you have to modify the input 2D matrix directly. Do not allocate another 2D matrix and do the rotation. We have an example here where we are given n into n matrix and then we have to rotate it clockwise and this is the result. So first let's see uh, how the result is going to look like and how do we come there. So let me go to my notepad. Now this is really cool feature of uh, the notepad. So let me try, let me show you this. So I select this matrix and then I rotate it, rotate right. And you see, this is what the actual uh, solution is going to look like. Now let's look what happened. Where did my one go? So my one was initially here. It went where? Here. Okay, my one went here. And then where did my four go? So if I'm going to rotate it, where does my four go? My four is here. So my four comes here. Where is 16 now? 16 is on the bottom left. So it comes here and then where did my 13 go? My 13 is actually here, which is here. So you see, there's a pattern. Uh, my first element goes to the first element of the column here. So let me let me do another batch and then you'll understand. So let's look at two. Where did my two go? My two is here. So my two is here. Where did my eight go? My eight is right here. So it comes here. 15, where is 15? 15? 15 is here. So that means it comes here. And then where did my nine go? My nine is actually here. So it comes here. Now let's look at the last one here. Uh, where is three? Three is right here. So my three comes here. Where did my 12 go? My 12 is here. So my 12 will go here. Where did my 14 go? My 14 is right here. So my 14 will go here. And where is five? Five is right here. So my five. So do you see the pattern? Do you see that uh, we are actually replacing all the elements in a similar fashion? And that's going to happen for all the elements on the edge. So basically what's happening is our particular row, our this, this row is actually becoming a column. You see one, two, three, four, and that is going to become one, two, three, four. So that's actually how you rotate a matrix. And the same is going to happen for the one that's inside this small matrix. Now, if you check, my 6 will actually be here. My 7 will come here, 11 here, and then 10 at 6's place. So this is also going to change. And that's actually what is in the transpose matrix. So uh, we have to solve this particular problem by using no extra. The first thing that I'm going to need are my boundaries. So my left boundary and my right boundary. And then the second thing I'm going to need are my top and bottom. So this becomes my top this becomes my bottom. If I take those points into consideration, this particular point becomes top left. This is the top right. This becomes the bottom right. And this becomes the bottom left. Since it's on the left, it's on the bottom, it's bottom left. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, once I have these points in place, I'm going to start shuffling. So my one, which is here, goes to four. My 4 here goes to 16, 16 goes to 13, and then 13 goes to 1. So I talked about uh, having to save everything in a temp variable, which can be very confusing. So what I'll do is I'll initially store my 1 in a top left variable. So I store my in 1 in my top left variable. And then I'll show you the transition again, just to make sure that you get what I'm talking about. So I stored my top left in a variable and then I move my bottom left so this particular 13 to my top left so 13 comes here I'm just going to update this in this matrix so that you understand the transition then I'll have my bottom right update my bottom left so my 6 is here then my 4 which is the top right goes to the bottom right so my four comes here. Then 
my top left needs to go into my top right and since i already override my top right or uh, top left i'm going to take my top left from here so my one comes here now you see we actually uh, shifted all the edges now i want to do the same thing with two but how do i do that how do i move my top left and top right we can do that using another pointer which is i so initially my i would be here and then i'm going to increment my i and so i'll be able to do the transition now i'll be storing this two in my top left variable so my top left now actually becomes two i'll be updated i'll move my nine from here to here so my nine comes here then i'll move my 15 to ninth place so my 15 is here and then i move 8 to 15th place so 8 comes here and then lastly i want to move my top left to my 8th position and i already have that stored so i move that to here then i'm going to again increment my i so that i'll be able to explode this particular element and this particular square if you see this is actually a square so uh, i want to process that i'll increment my i and for that i'll have my three stored in a top left variable so my three is going to be stored once i have that stored uh, my bottom left is going to come here so my five is here then my 14 is going to come in fives place so my 14 is here and then my 12 comes in 14 place so my 12 is here and then lastly i need my three back so my three i'm going to get from my top left variable and it's going to come here so now you see we have explored all the edges so we have explored the boundary of the matrix now it's time to go in now how will we go in how do i make sure that i explore this inner type inner side for that we are going to have to increment our l and then decrement our r so i'm just going to get rid of this particular lines okay just to make it clean what i'm going to do is i'm going to increment my l and then decrement my r and similarly i'm going to increment my top and then decrement my bottom so now my top bottom left right are focused in this particular sub matrix i'll again have my i in place so my i is this time going to start from my left and then it will store my six into a temporary variable which is top left right now right now this is the matrix uh, imagine this as a matrix and this is going to be the top left element so this is going to be six so i transfer my 10 to 6 so my 10 comes here 11 comes here so 11 is here and then 7 comes in 11's place so 7 is here and then where is my top left i'm going to get it from my variable so this becomes 6. so this is actually the uh, uh, matrix after rotation now let's see how we can actually convert this into code The first thing that we needed is left and right so left is zero and right is actually length of the first matrix minus one so one thing that i wanted to uh, note out just point out is that even if there are four elements in this particular row uh, you'll see that we only process three at a time so we process we processed one we processed two and then we process three we did not really process four we just did the, we just shifted one two and three and then we did not get to four we, we just moved one to four four to six and then six to thirteen and thirteen to one so that means that we are just going to process three elements and that is actually going to be length of matrix minus one so that is nothing but length of matrix minus one. length of matrix actually gives you the number of rows and then minus one because we are just processing minus one elements so in three three in our case I'm going to continue going through the for while loop and now how for how long do I have to do my while loop so let me go back to our little example now in this case how do I know you know how do I know I should stop so 
we are going to go ahead and then increment my L and decrement my R in this case because we the program doesn't know that there is nothing inside this particular square. So once my R and L cross each other, that's when I'll stop the loop. So that is going to be our condition. So I say while L is less than R, for every L, L is less than R, I'm going to need an I pointer. So I in range. My range is going to start with L and go till R minus 1. Or I can just write R minus L. Now I need a top. So top is going to be L. My bottom is actually R. First thing, what did I do? I stored the top left element. So I'm going to store my top left. I'm going to create a variable top left. And then my top left is actually going to be matrix of top and then left. Now, this is incomplete because we did not take into consideration the I, I part. We did not include this I variable inside. And now, if you look at this particular example, and let me actually just clean up a little bit. Okay, so you see that L and R are actually horizontal and top and bottom are vertical. So when I'm using my top left and my top left is changing with each and every, uh, every square. So for example, you know, this was a square and then this was a square. So it changes with every square. So I have to make sure that I integrate that I. And since in my first, the top left is actually traveling from left to right, my left is going to increment. So that's how we are going to do that. So we are going to write L plus I. Now, the next one was move my bottom left to top left. So in order to move my bottom left to top left, we already have our, our top left with us. So this is our top left. So I'm just going to copy paste that. And then about my bottom left. So matrix of bottom and then left. Going back to our little matrix again, my bottom left was actually traveling up. So this was my bottom left. And for every element, it's actually traveling up. You see 13, 9, 5, and 1. So it's traveling up. That means my bottom is actually, I have to decrement my I from the bottom because I want to travel up. So my bottom is going to be bottom minus I. The next thing I want to do is move my bottom right to my bottom left. So move bottom right to bottom left. I already have my bottom left, so I'm going to copy that. And then let's talk about the bottom right. So bottom of right. Sorry, matrix of bottom and then this is going to be actually right. So I have my bottom right. Now let's look at the bottom right. So bottom right was here. What was happening to bottom right? It is moving to the left. That means it's decrementing. And what is decrementing? Remember, horizontal is left and right. Vertical is uh, top and bottom. It's going horizontal and it's dec decrementing. So it's actually decrementing R. So uh, where is my R? My R is here. So bottom of R. So R minus I. Oops, it should be inside. So this should be R minus I. Uh, the last thing was to move my top right to bottom right. So move my top right to bottom right. So I'm moving my top right to my bottom right. I already have my bottom right. So I'll take that. And then I have to see what my top right looks like. So let's go here. What what was my top right? My top right is here. What's happening to it? It's going down. It's going down. So that means it has to be either top or bottom because top and bottom are vertical. And then what's happening? It's actually incrementing the top. Because it's going down, the top is incrementing. So 
I'm going to add I to my top. So it's going to be matrix of, first of all, it was top left, oh, sorry, top right. And then I increment my, add my I to my top element. I have everything in place now. The last thing is to move the top left to the top right. So I move my top left to top right. And my top left, I've already saved it in a variable. And I'm going, so I'm going to take my top right and then I'm going to store my top left, which I had stored right here. Now, once I have everything in place, once I have this for loop running over and over again, uh, and I want to make my box smaller, what do I do? I decrement my R by one and my increment my L by one. And then this is the code. That's it. So let's see if we can run it. Okay, submit. Yeah, so you see this is accepted, beats 82% of the solutions. Now let's talk about the space and time complexity. If you look at the matrix that we have in the example, we are actually looking through each and we, each and every element just once. So the time complexity, since it's a n by n matrix, the time complexity of this actually becomes n square. It's basically n into n, so n square. And if you talk about the space complexity, now let's go to the code. What are we using? We are using left and right, and we are using top and bottom. And we are not really storing anything here. We are just storing constants. And so the time, com uh, the space complexity of this algorithm is going to be constant. I hope this explanation was helpful. The code is going to be on my GitHub repository. Uh, the, I'll include the link for that in the description below. Also, if you like my videos, please give it a thumbs up and comment below. If you want me to solve any specific problems, please let me know. You can also let me know on my Discord channel or in the comments below as well. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Thanks.